Westminster Kelly's, located in the small borough of New Wilmington, Pennsylvania, the home of many great traditions, religious, academic, athletic. But this week marks the tradition that has been remembered since 1936, for 56 years, as the 14th National Mock Convention begins at Westminster College. The founder of the Mock Convention, Mr. Thomas V. Mansell, continues to reside in New Wilmington. He originated the idea back in 1936, after first graduating from Westminster in 1929, then attended law school at Harvard Law School, he was an instructor at Westminster College teaching American government when he made his suggestions. I uh, went to Harvard Law School, and uh, when I got up there, I found there in the house where we roomed there were about seven or eight fellows, and two of them were from Oberlin, graduated from Oberlin. They'd, this was their second year, my first year. And all they talked about was the mock convention that they held at uh, Oberlin. And uh, what a good time they had and uh, some of the problems they had. And uh, it sounded quite exciting. And so I, I started then to ask some questions about it, uh, thinking maybe someday I could use it. or I didn't know what, but at any rate, they explained what, how they carried it out and so on. And uh, that's what got me interested to start with. And then when I came back here and they wanted me to teach history or government, why the, uh, it, that uh, the idea along about 1936 came to me, why don't we, we try that? I think I uh, talked or corresponded with uh, one of my roommates uh, from Oberlin to get some more details. And uh, so uh, I suggested the students that uh, it sounded very exciting the way the Oberlin people had done it. Would they like to try it? I'm an old 77 gymnasium on a Westminster College campus, best known for 77 consecutive home victories by the Westminster Titan basketball team. But this old gymnasium is also the site of the beginning of another great Westminster College tradition, that of the mock convention. The National Mock Convention held every four years except for 1944 on a Westminster College campus. The original Mock Convention held right here. Platforms set in the center of the old 77 gymnasium and the spectators from New Wilmington, they had to pay 50 cents a piece to come in and see this event in old 77. The look of the convention has changed, but the enthusiasm for the convention once it begins has not. Those who were skeptical about the thing are usually the most enthusiastic when they participate and uh, find that they're, they're doing the real thing. They're voting for actual people. And uh, this convention uh, could count for something. Until 1956, all the conventions were Republican. After that time, the convention was held for the party out of power to create a more exciting event. The yearbooks remind us that past participants will remember a lot of fun. But Mansell points out some conventioneers took the matter very seriously. He was uh, not in the crowd. There was always several factions, and he couldn't get to be head man of any of them. So, uh, but he made a nuisance of himself. <laughs> so they went. Down, actually, this happened. Went to the sheriff. He went to the sheriff. He says they're going to kidnap me, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I need protection. So the sheriff told him. He said, "Well." What? We'll provide, you, you just give us a call if you think anything is going to happen, and, and we'll be right up there. Well, in those days, the sheriff didn't do much of criminal work anyway, but he, he got him, and he became later uh, quite a prominent lawyer in Jackson, Mississippi. In the 1950s, the convention moved to Memorial Fieldhouse, its present location, just in time to vote for Dwight D. Eisenhower as the Republican nominee. Regardless of location, the benefits remained the same. Uh, I think... Uh, that uh, it was a great thing uh, for them to know just actually what was going on, uh, how it was done. Uh, I'll trade you so many votes for the vice president if you give me so many for president, right. stuff like that. And uh, then when it was all over, they knew a heck of a lot more than they knew when they went into it. And uh, uh, I was thinking about that the other day, that they really, uh, absorbed an awful lot of knowledge, information, in a comparatively short period of time. As I said, they, uh, 
those who were skeptical eventually came over and participated. And, uh, well, I can't tell you how many of them have come to me afterwards and said, that's, that is the greatest thing we ever had at Westminster. And how long should the tradition of this mock convention that started in 1936 here in this gymnasium continue? As long as they have a, a substantial number of the students that are willing to uh, participate and spend their money on it, uh, then I think it's, uh, they ought to do it because it does. It's a learning process uh, with a lot of fun involved in it. That's about it. The fun and the learning continues tonight at the home of the second oldest mock national convention, Westminster College in New Wilmington. For Cable 9, I'm Dave Warner.